Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I want to get into a tutorial on my many years in the making Photoshop gold type technique. We're going to get some nice organic reflections going, not just on the faces, but even on the beveled edges. We'll create a little bit of natural roughness on the surface, and best of all, nothing has been painted in here. So believe it or not, this is all live type. Once you get the setup going, you can scroll through fonts or type out whatever you need, and it all turns to gold in real time. That's all coming up. Let's get started. All right, I've got a new document going here and I will set the size to 3840 by 2160 or 4K to get lots of nice detail in there. And I'm gonna set the background color here to black. And for this document, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna change the bit depth here from 8-bit to 16-bit. That means we'll get exponentially more detail in the color. That's gonna be really important since the gold is gonna have lots of subtle gradients which can quickly get chunky in 8-bit color. So that looks good and create. Then T for my type tool and I'm first gonna to wanna to set the color here to 50% gray. So I'll make sure this B value here for brightness is at 50%, so okay. And this is a font called Market Fresh Inline. I'll include a link to that. Command return to exit live type mode and command T to transform and I'll scale that up. I can hold option to scale symmetrically, then move it to the center more or less, something like that. And in this font, the tracking between those letters is a little wacky. I'm just gonna click back in here and use my option and arrow keys to adjust that a little. That was just bugging me, that's better. All right, first thing I'll do here is apply just a very standard bevel emboss effect to the type. I'll go to my effects tab and bevel and emboss. Then I'm gonna reset that to default and I'll set the size to 11 pixels and I wanna turn the depth up here. I'm gonna put this at 700%, which just gives a more defined corner. That's it for effects now, so okay. Then an important part of the process, I'm gonna take this layer all by itself and drag it down onto the folder icon to put it into a group folder. So it's a group with just one thing in it, but what that does is to isolate this bevel and emboss effect. So the effect gets applied to the layer before it interacts with any other layers, and that actually is important. So got it in the folder, and next I'm gonna create a new layer, and I'm making sure it doesn't go into that folder, it sits on top of the folder here and I'll press G for my gradient tool, then D to make sure my colors are set to default black and white, and I'm making sure this gradient opacity is at 100%. Then I'm gonna use this gradient tool to drag a gradient from bottom to top, just a bit larger than the size of those letters and at a little bit of an angle. Then I wanna create a clipping mask so that the gradient lives just within the shape of the letters. I'll hover in between the gradient layer and the group folder here and option click to create a clipping mask. Then I'm gonna change the blend mode of this gradient layer to overlay, and I'll bring the opacity of this layer back a bit to 60%. And next up is to start getting that gold color in there. I'm gonna do that using the adjustment layer called gradient map. It's here under the adjustment layers tab, gradient map. And I'll also include this gradient map in the clipping mask with an option click between the two layers. And right now it looks like gradient map doesn't do anything, but that's because it's mapping a black and white gradient across an image that's already black and white. So if I click on the gradient here, I get all these options of different gradients that you can use. And if I click on a few, it'll give you a sense of what it's doing. It's taking all the values in your image and giving them new values based on this gradient. So. Why you'd ever wanna turn everything red and green, I don't know, but if you found yourself in that circumstance, this gradient will take anything black and make it red, anything white and make it green, and give these values to everything in between. Honestly, most of these presets are pretty useless, but the important thing here is that once we get into these gradients with multiple values in them, it actually starts to approximate the look of reflections. And I can edit a gradient here to modify it or create a new one. So the idea here is to build a custom gradient that rather than rainbow colors has all the colors of a gold reflection. And creating a gradient like this can be fun to do, but it does take a bit of time. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna import a gradient that I've already built and will include a link to in the description below. If I click on the load button here, I'll load this gradient called Texture Guys Ultimate Gold Gradient. And it doesn't apply it automatically, but adds it to the bottom of my presets. So let me select that one, and there we go, I'll hit OK. So that is the foundation of the gold look. 
any gray values under this gradient map are getting converted to gold values. And in some ways, this could be considered a finished gold look, but let's treat this as kind of the jumping off point. So let me show you what happens if I go back into the effects palette. I'll double click on this bevel and emboss effect, and I'm going to add another effect onto this type layer. I'm going to select inner shadow, and I'll reset it to default. Then I'm going to set the opacity to 30% zero for the distance and zero for the choke then i'll bring the size up to about 60 pixels awesome so let's just take a look at what that's doing i'll hit ok and i'm going to turn off my gradient map layer you can see that all the inner shadow does is to introduce some slight variation in the values across the face of these letters but what that ends up doing is pushing the gradient map around which creates this illusion of bending light and I'm going to go through a few steps that all follow this same premise. If I start to introduce details in the gray values, they're going to show up as details in the gold reflections. And first, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button. A lot of work goes into each one of these tutorials, so I really do appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe. In the next tutorial, we're going to get into this super realistic weathered paint technique. All right, well, let's get back into this and see where we can take it. First, I want to get some variation on these beveled edges so it'll feel more like it's reflecting an environment. I'm going to reopen my effects palette and apply the stroke effect. So I'll reset to defaults, then I'm going to change the size to kind of match the width of my beveled edge here. I'll set that to 10 pixels. Then here under fill type, I'll set this to gradient. And I'm going to change the gradient it's using. I'll just use the same ultimate gold gradient again. I want to dial the strength of the effect back a little bit, but in order for the opacity slider to work right, I do need to check this little overprint box. Then I'm going to bring the opacity back to about 50%. And if I preview that, check out those nice reflection details it's bringing into the edges. So, okay. All right, next I want to get a little bit of irregularity in the reflection on the faces. I'm going to create just sort of a blurry noise layer that will help to randomize these gray values. I'll go to the very top and create a new layer. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Render, Clouds. Then I'm going to blur this a bit with a Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'll bring that all the way to 40 pixels. OK. Then I'm going to drag this layer down under my gradient map, which will automatically put it into the clipping mask. And I'll bring the opacity down to 20%. I like how that just kind of throws the reflections around to be a little bit more random. All right, so next I'm going to bring a texture in here to give it some kind of real world detail. I'm opening this Texture Labs Metal 232. So this is actually more of a pitted steel, but I do like the look of these details. So I'll select all here and copy that, then Command W to close. Then I'll paste it right above my blurry noise layer here with Command V. And I'm actually going to bring the opacity on it way, way down to just 3%. It really doesn't take much to push around this gold gradient map, but you can see that it really is picking up the details of that texture. All right, then I'm going to open one more texture here, this Grunge 122, which is some nice dried water spots. And I'll select all and copy that, then close that one out. And with this texture, I'm going to paste it all the way on top, even above my gradient map. So this one will be a little bit of grunge that's actually on top of the gold surface. I do want to include it in the clipping mask, though. So I'll option click in between the two layers. Then I'm going to set the blending mode to lighten. And I'll bring the opacity back to about 50%. All right, looking good. I'm going to get one final effect in here. What gold is complete without a little bit of glow? So I'll use the outer glow effect, but I don't want to apply it to this text layer. I'm going to apply it to the folder, the group folder. And that'll tell Photoshop to apply the glow after everything in this clipping mask has been composited. So with the group folder selected, I'll go to Effects, and I'll select Outer Glow. Then I'll reset this to default and bring the size up to 70 pixels. Then I'll click on the Color tab, and I'm going to hover over my image to sample the brightest gold color I can find. And then I'll drag that value up to the top right corner, which will give me the most saturated version of that color. Then I'm going to bring the opacity down just a bit to 20% and OK. And there it is, the gold text effect. But let me show you the coolest part about this. This text layer all the way inside the group folder is still live. So if I select that, I can actually still scroll through fonts. And it's going to get all that beautiful gold applied on the fly. 
And I love seeing how all these different fonts look. Even the little icons look cool or fonts with a ton of detail kind of have a different look. All right, well, that wraps it up. I really do hope you enjoy experimenting with this. Please let me know in the comments below and hit that like button or subscribe. You can find this gradient preset and the textures I'm using here at texturelabs.org. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.